Yes, our first, um, I suppose after we'd attacked the, um, the oil fields came our first real confrontation with, um, with Japanese aircraft. And um, we knew that they were coming because they'd sent us sort of spotter aeroplane out to find out where we were. And we'd sent up um, air combat patrols, patrols to um, ensure that we weren't in too much trouble. But some of these people got through, and these were seven who got through, seven bombers. And they were torpedo bombers. And we didn't realize at the time that they were not just intent on dropping their torpedoes, they were intent on crashing into the ships themselves. And this was um, a totally new scenario as far as we were concerned. It was a Japanese plane who'd been shot down and was going to take somebody with him, or at least try to damage a carrier. He, whatever it was, dived at our stern. And it, it, it bent the centre shaft. We didn't know this at the time. Uh, the illustrious had three screws, three, three main propellers, two subsidiaries, one on each side and a, a main bigger one in the middle. And the central uh, bearings uh, had somehow or other um, disfigured in some way the, the propeller shaft. So it did not rotate exactly centrally and it did mean that it was therefore dangerous to uh, run the ship at full speed. Well, anyway, we got down to Sydney and we went straight into Captain Cook Dock, Sydney, a dry dock, which wasn't officially opened at the time. Uh, it was brand new. Anyway, what they did in there was to take off the centre screw, blank blank it off, they found the centre shaft was bent, so rather than redo it and stop us going round to the Pacific, they blanked blank it off. So now we only had two screws. We went up off Queensland and did some uh, landing, deck landing trials, and we lost quite a few planes in the process because our speed was considerably reduced. And uh, the pilots, of course, eventually got used to it, but um, we lost quite a few planes in the process, and pilots, of course. The right cable, what the bloody hell is this? Let's get going, shall we? Come on, chop, chop. And moving at full speed is necessary for a fleet and because Elastis was confined to 24 knots when the rest of the fleet could do 27 knots uh, she was replaced as soon as possible by uh, a fully fit carrier actually was was coming straight at I, I just landed actually my plane was still by the, uh, the back round and I was walking up the center of the deck to go to the island to report to commander flying and I saw I heard the guns and all the four anti-aircraft guns were going off up, up to the the, the uh, port bow and I could see this plane coming straight and I could tell it was a kamikaze <laughs> Japanese spider and uh, with, with, as soon as I see it, one of, the, one of our guns blew its, one of its wings off, but it didn't alter the plane, it still came on. And then the other wing got shot off, <laughs> and I think the tail was missing. <laughs> and eventually, I, I split eagle myself flat on the ground because it was within two or three seconds of it hitting the ship. It was just kept getting bigger and bigger and losing these bits, and I just flat down on the deck and so on. Didn't look up. 
uh, naturally, <laughs> keep your face down and out of the harm's way, uh, heard a bang and looking up realised that what had happened was it had flown across in front of me, he was trying to hit the bridge. In fact, he did hit the bridge just in front of it, on the deck just in front of the bridge. But fortunately, being a four and a half inch armour deck, <laughs> it went boom, and it went over the side. He dived at us and he was going to... The, the, the prime objective of a kamikaze pilot on the American ships was between the island and the flight deck. The American carriers were wooden decks. But we had, I think, four inches of armour plate on our flight deck. So they, they used to dive straight at the bridge after they found that diving on British carriers was a different story. <laughs> because so I think it was the indefatigable. One crashed on a flight deck and it made a big dent. There were men killed, of course, but um, the one that caught, hit us was coming straight for the bridge. And here's another little story. Um, the, the gun, it's just a twin oilican, right underneath the bridge. Uh, at, the, at the front of the bridge, right underneath the twin oilican. And uh, <coughs> one of the fellows who who's manning the gun, the trainer, I think they called him the trainer. I think there were three crew on there. There was a captain of the gun, there was a layer, and a trainer, and an ammunition number. I can't remember. Anyway, this bloke saw this plane coming out, he buggered off. Round the back of the island was a little companion way just enough for a couple of people to pass and he dived off behind there and unfortunately the skipper while all this is going on I happened to see this go on from the bridge anyway the, the captain of the gun dives into this fella's place and he actually shoots off part of this jet plane's wing so he's diverted the course of the plane from the bridge, in fact it did, I think it did actually strike the bridge, but it went virtually straight over the side, and exploded over the side. There were various pieces of it, and pieces of the pilot. Uh, the chief medical officer on board Illustrious found the pilot's eye, on the thunder deck which he put in a little bottle as a souvenir. I had a twisted piece of metal uh, as a souvenir. They thought that it had done no damage at all, really, the, to the upper part of the ship and the deck. What they didn't know was that when it just exploded underwater with the bomb and so on, which it did, uh, just down to the starboard side of the ship, it had made um, plate damage on some of the uh, side plates of the ship and some of the stanchions inside were uh, slightly out of true. It wasn't, it wasn't major damage and I don't suppose they knew it at the time. So. Bits of the plane, bits of the pilot, um, all sorts came in board. Uh, In fact, at the Imperial War Museum, and there was, when it's still there, there was an engine cylinder from this Japanese plane. It was an exhibit in the War Museum. So it, it was very hairy, very hairy. And I did actually pick up a piece of this Japanese plane, I can't remember what it was, a Zero or a Zeke or something. And it had, in fact, on this piece of metal, US steel and a patent number. We must have been supplying bits, or the Americans were supplying bits to them. Uh, so we didn't suffer too much damage. We didn't realise it at the time, but because of this damage that had been done to our centre shaft and the fact that this one had exploded over the side, sprung our plates. 
water was coming in, but that wasn't a great problem. But <coughs> now the ship was beginning, as we were on these sorties and landing planes, the, the, the ship was actually shaking. Uh, <coughs> So there was obviously something more than just water ingress. So they decided that this would have to be looked at. <coughs> so we were relieved by this carrier. And uh, we thought, well, we're going home. There was such a difference between the... Uh, degree of damage that was done to American carriers by the kamikazes compared with what they did with us. So the illustrious and the uh, uh, the formidable, I think, which replaced us was uh, uh, badly damaged. At least the ship wasn't badly damaged. He, uh, um, a kamikaze hit it when there were a lot of planes on deck, uh, a deck park, and consequently there were aircraft on fire and so on and petrol all over the deck flaming and so on uh, superficial damage which could be chucked over the side and wouldn't put the ship out of action for very long but, but for certain periods of time uh. the armoured decks yeah I mean and they didn't save you completely but they stopped you getting uh, I mean we had to have proper repairs when we got back to Australia months later but uh, you know, we could get by, it didn't stop flying, except the only one that was replaced was the illustrious, who'd been had a long war, you know, they'd been in the med, it had been hit in the Battle of Malta, and it was really running down, and they replaced that with the formidable, and she was allowed to toddle off home, so we still had our four carriers. <laughs> <laughs>